Nearly every year, scientists confirm that the previous year was the warmest on record. As greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, we approach boundaries and tipping points that once crossed will dramatically alter life here on Earth. Researchers estimate that over the next 50 years, one third of all plant and animal species are at risk of extinction due to climate change. This will fracture ecosystems and compromise our food supply. By 2100, rising sea levels will threaten and displace nearly 200 million people. The military even recognizes climate change as a threat multiplier, meaning it makes every other national security challenge harder to manage. Problem is, we've seen this crisis coming for decades, and yet it only continues to get worse. It's clear whatever we're trying to do hasn't been working fast enough. What if we're trying to solve the climate crisis at the wrong scale? So far, we've attempted to slow global warming with two primary strategies, asking individuals to change and asking governments to change. Let's take a look at both of these. Our quest for greater individual climate responsibility is worthwhile. Here in America, our per capita emissions are three times that of the average European. It's a sobering fact that it would take five Earths if everybody lived like us, and we only have one. So we've tried doing better by adjusting our thermostats and swapping light bulbs and just watching as mounds of recycling pile up in the corner of our homes. Or maybe you're all a lot neater than we are. But none of these individual changes can ever compare to what the COVID pandemic brought about in 2020. We canceled flights, reduced how much we drove, more of us than ever worked from home. So much of the world shut down. But in spite of that, emissions only dropped by 6%. Think about this. The COVID pandemic brought about some of the biggest changes of a generation, and still emissions only dropped by 6%. As life returned a bit more to some semblance of normal in 2021, those emissions shot right back up again. It's clear that individual actions alone won't stop the climate crisis. At the other scale is our hope for greater national and international climate legislation. The Paris Climate Agreement truly is a monumental human achievement. Nearly every nation of the world came together with pledges to limit emissions and keep the global temperature rise below the critical one and a half degrees Celsius uh, threshold. But despite this, the challenge is these pledges are all voluntary. The US holds the unique distinction of being the only nation to exit and then re-enter the agreement. But plenty of other nations had climate-friendly leaders since signing on to Paris and are still struggling to meet their commitments. Here in the US, a carbon tax feels like radical politics, but others have noted that it would have taken a price on carbon in the 1970s if we were to slowly ratchet down emissions over several decades to reach carbon neutrality. At this point, although it would be really helpful, it's almost too little too late. The Green New Deal offers the type of national scale vision that could prioritize climate in time, but if we can't agree on the voluntary commitments of Paris, think how long it will take to pass such massive legislation. So here we are, stuck between stressing over plastic straws and government inaction. Is there another way? I believe the missing scale for effective climate action is regional, not just cities, but rather urban centers and the surrounding rural communities. You might be thinking, but what do farmers have to do with climate change? Project Drawdown is a nonprofit known for their work categorizing and ranking the top 100 solutions for reversing global warming. 
Drawdown itself is a term that describes a point in the future when not only CO2 emissions, but the concentrations of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere peak and come back down. This idea is transformative because it emphasizes that there's a solution to this. There's a way out. It also empowers us humans with the agency to actually regenerate Earth's ecosystems, literally to bring them back to life. Can you see how different this is from our previous goals of just trying to lessen our impact and be less and less bad? My biggest takeaway from the drawdown analysis was that 12 of the top 20 solutions are connected to land and food. These are solutions that are deeply intertwined with rural communities. So much of our focus has been on what cities can do about climate change, and it's a lot. But in the process, we've overlooked many rural solutions. Farmers that are adopting a more regenerative mindset are changing the way they manage soils and care for animals, and they're integrating more perennial crops like trees into their farms. In many ways, we're working to relearn strategies that indigenous cultures practiced here for millennia in order to heal soils and clean water and restore ecosystems through agriculture. For the past five years, I've been working to grow a regenerative ag division within a local agricultural consultancy. I was actually motivated to do this work because of the opportunity I saw in the drawdown analysis. I wanted to know if farmers would be more motivated to engage with climate narratives if they were brought in as part of the solution. Few people are more connected to Earth's natural systems than farmers, and they see the changes. One farmer told me, things aren't just different from when my grandfather farmed this land, they're different from when I took over just 10 years ago. Many are also motivated by conservation and have worked really closely with us to measure their emissions and make improvements. Regenerative ag also makes good economic sense. In addition to the positive ecological benefits, many farmers are able to reduce their cost of inputs and add new revenue. As ecosystem service markets emerge, some farmers are even getting paid to farm carbon, literally measuring their yields by how much carbon is sequestered in the soil through regenerative ag practices. Although it might seem like the politics of climate change are tricky, I've often found resonance by talking about solutions at the local scale. The Green New Deal came up in a conversation with a farmer I've known for quite some time. After describing it as the epitome of federal overreach and excess spending, he talked about the things that we really need to focus on, like building strong, resilient agricultural communities that produce healthy, nutrient-dense foods. I said, you know, many of these ideas are actually core elements of the agricultural component of the Green New Deal. I bet if there were a local Green New Deal, you'd actually like most of it. See, it's often not our disagreements about the reality of climate change, or even in shared visions of the, an ideal future, but instead the politics that get entangled in these ideas. This is where the regional strategy really shines. The scale is more manageable, and it matches how community governance works. It can be easier for neighbors who understand each other's challenges and strengths to overcome political differences. I started a nonprofit that's focused on climate action at this local scale. Regenall unites communities to identify and implement local climate solutions for a more resilient future. Because Lancaster County is a place that's known for both its ruralness but also increasingly its urbanness, we felt like this was a really important place to start. The city of Lancaster has done a lot of really excellent work to do their greenhouse gas inventories and begin climate action plans, but the same parallel work had not been done at the county scale. So our team took this on. 
we now have a much better understanding of where emissions come from and their magnitude. And as a result, we have ideas for how urban and rural communities can work together to solve these tricky problems. We also took a look at the economics of our fuel use here in Lancaster and learned that every year our little county spends two and a half billion dollars on fossil fuels. And we don't have any mining or extraction industries here, so that's all money that just leaves our communities. Imagine a time in the future after we've built out a local renewable energy infrastructure, that money would all stay right here. Think of what we could do with an extra two and a half billion dollars in our collective annual budgets. So the next logical question is, what kinds of solutions could keep that money here in our pockets? Our team returned to the drawdown analysis. We identified 25 solutions that had particular ro local relevance here to Lancaster and analyzed the emission reductions and cost benefit if each solution were applied to its maximum capacity. For a solution like rooftop solar, we built a database of favorable installation sites using geospatial data and calculated the cost and return uh, as well as how many jobs could be created to build out a local renewable energy infrastructure. From this, many of our conclusions actually mirror the drawdown global analysis. There is a pathway for Lancaster to reach carbon neutrality. It requires a mix of solutions. Just like the drawdown analysis, the economics makes sense, even when important climate solutions that don't have a great financial return are included. Our analysis isn't meant to be prescriptive, but rather shows pathways by which Lancaster County could achieve carbon neutrality and create jobs in the process. This kind of work is important because it brings really big, complex ideas down to a local scale where we can actually do something about it. My goal with Regen All is that regardless of what governments decide to do about climate change, we can show that there are common sense strategies that we can implement in our communities right now. Our pathway to a more regenerative future must be urban and rural because big climate solutions exist in rural communities. This regional scale makes political challenges easier to overcome. And a solutions-focused mindset helps focus people and capital on climate implementation. We need a shift. If we are to move from an extractive society to a regenerative one, we need bold new visions of what a better world could look like at a scale we can actually comprehend. This shift will happen when we commit ourselves to implement the solutions we already have region by region. Our challenge is vast, but there's still hope. Keep working to lessen your individual impact. When you need to buy new things, vote with your dollar to usher in new systems, but remember, the climate crisis can't be solved by your individual choices alone. Keep marching in the streets with a bold new vision of a better world, but also remember the limits of national governments to show true leadership. Immerse yourself in climate solutions. Find the things you care about most and get involved in groups in your community that are working to make them happen. Finally, move beyond your political affiliation and get to work making a difference. Together, we can build communities that are more resilient and restore abundant life to the entire Earth. Thank you. <laughs>